Hello everyone. I welcome you all for today's session. I am Dr. Priyanka Sachdev here, educator on an academy. So today I am here to take my series to continue my series on integrated diabetes mellitus. So in diabetes mellitus, it is a very important topic in all subjects. In all subjects, diabetes mellitus is a uh, important subject, uh, important topic, not only for university exams, but also for your competitive exams, many questions from pathology, from medicine are coming from diabetes mellitus, from pharmacology. So I will, uh, I have already taken what is diabetes mellitus, the introduction part, um, the anatomy and histology of pancreas, the physiology portion of insulin regulation, how insulin is synthesized, how it is released, how it acts on the uh, various target organs. I have already discussed about the glucose homeostasis in, uh, in human body. In human body, how glucose remain within normal limits in the blood and in the cell. So the two hormones, insulin and glucagon, how they work during meal, during fasting state. We have already discussed that. We have discussed the classification of diabetes also. So it is a big classification given by the WHO, but we have discussed type 1, type 2 in detail. The pathogenesis of type 1 and type 2 diabetes, the differences between them we have understood well. Now, in the last lecture, I have discussed clinical features also. So let me continue with clinical features and come on the complications and continue the rest. The pathogenesis of the complication, diagnosis, and last but not least, the treatment portion of the diabetes, right? So let me start. So in the last lecture, we have already seen the clinical features of diabetes mellitus. Can anyone of you, uh, of you can enumerate the clinical features of diabetes mellitus? If any diabetic patient is coming to your clinic, what will be the campaign of that diabetic patient? Diabetes mellitus. So as we know, type 1 and type 2 are the two diabetes mellitus. In type 1, the onset is almost abrupt. Abrupt onset is there. Uh, abrupt onset is there and uh, the age of the diagnosis is usually less than 35 years of age. It is diagnosed at adolescent age, in young age, right? The patient comes to you with triple P, triple P, 3P complaint. What are the triple P? Polyuria, polydipsia and polyphagia. We have already discussed that is increased urination, increased thirst and increased hunger. We have discussed that. Apart from it, the fourth symptom, the fourth symptom is weight. This is a classical triad. The fourth symptom is weight loss. It is not included in the triad, but it is there. So total four complaints are there. Now, please, everyone appreciate the paradox. I'm saying polyphagia as well as weight loss together. So patient is eating more. Still patient is having weight loss. So whenever this paradoxical situation coming to your clinic, any patient complaining of that, you should have suspicion of diabetes. You should have suspicion. So these are the symptoms, the clinical features. Here also, the same clinical scenario exists here. But the here patient is not having weight loss. The patient are obese in type 2. In type 2, the patient are obese. Here, usually the patients are asymptomatic. They are asymptomatic and they are diagnosed as type 2 diabetes incidentally during other blood investigation. But here also patient can have triple P late at later uh, situation, at later age, right? After the onset of the disease, many years after they can have this triple P, polyuria, polydipsia, polyphagia, but not at the, the onset is usually very slow and insidious very slow it is asymptomatic so these are the clinical features we have already seen so we have seen that type 1 diabetes it is diagnosed below 35 years of age the onset is abrupt the patient complains of triple p polyuria polydipsia polyphagia the classical triad and apart from it the patient are not obese they have weight loss they have excessive weight loss so polyphagia and weight loss together the two paradoxical conditions occurs together so in this diagram you can see we have already discussed in the last lecture also See a girl, she is a young girl, the age of the patient is young, you can see in the diagram, there is a diagram just to have a, uh, the things in your permanent memory. She, the, dr the dr girl is drinking more, polydipsia, she is eating more, polyphagia and she is frequently using the restroom, so polydipsia. You can see the triple P here and the girl is slim trip, she is not obese, she is having weight loss. So all four things that is polyuria, polydipsia, polyphagia along with weight loss is visible in this one diagram only and the young girl is there the age is also visible right most common complication in type 1 diabetes is ketoacidosis i will explain you ketoacidosis today only in type 2 diabetes on the contrary the age of the patient is usually towards the older age so they are diagnosed usually after 40 years or 50 years the onset is slow in type 1 the onset was abrupt the age is less than 35 in type 2, the age is more than 40. They are towards older age the, and the onset is slow. The patient is usually asymptomatic and they are diagnosis. Uh, the diagnosis of diabetes mellitus is based on the basis of glycosuria or hyperglycemia on some other blood investigation. It is a coincidental finding, right? Patients are usually obese. 
they don't have weight loss they are obese and ketoacidosis is a rare complication here it doesn't happen usually right so i have already explained you the reason for polyuria polydipsia and polyphagia in the last lecture those who have missed please watch episode number three this is episode number four of diabetes mellitus now please understand the mechanism of triple p why there is triple p i have already explained you in the last lecture i'm not repeating it right so we have understood it so let me move on the complication directly this was a revision of the last lecture let me move on the complication portion di directly complication of the diabetes so let me start with the complications right so in if we talk about the complication of diabetes there are two type of complications acute complications and late complications acute means sudden acute diabetes complication are two acute metabolic complications are two diabetic ketoacidosis which is more common in type 1 diabetes and hyperosmolar hyperglycemic non keto non ketotic coma hhs it usually happens in type 2 diabetes. I will explain you the mechanism of both the pathogenesis of both. Don't worry. And in late complication, which occurs after many years, chronically, if the hyperglycemia is not managed, patient is not taking any treatment for diabetes, not keeping the blood sugar levels under control, then late complication after 5 years, 10 years, 20 years, these complication arises. So number one, blood vessels may hoga atherosclerosis. So because of atherosclerosis in the blood vessel, there are many diseases which will arise. If atherosclerosis is taking place in coronary arteries, it, which, it will result in myocardial infarction. If atherosclerosis is taking place in cerebral arteries, it will result in stroke. If atherosclerosis is taking place in, uh, you know, limbs arteries, it can result in lower extremity ischemia. So there are many complications as a result of atherosclerosis, atherosclerosis in the blood vessel. Number two, there can be three organs which can be involved chronically. That is kidney kidney number one nerves number two nerves number two and retina of the eye number three so there can be three complications diabetic nephropathy neuropathy and retinopathy nephropathy kidney involvement neuropathy nerves involvement and retinopathy the retina involvement apart from it the diabetic persons are more prone of having infections right because the blood glucose levels are high and organisms love sugar right so various bacterial infections especially fungal infections are more common in these persons right so these are the complications so we will study the acute complication as well as chronic complication have you have you got it so if you talk about the complications of diabetes there are two type of complications what are the two type of complications in diabetes you tell me so it is acute and it is chronic acute and chronic the two type of complications are there in acute complication there are basically two complications diabetic ketoacidosis and hyperosmolar uh, coma right so that is the thing and in chronic complication there can be the three organ involvement the first is atherosclerosis and after that three organ involvement diabetic nephropathy diabetic neuropathy and diabetic retinopathy apart from it we have infections this is microvascular these are macrovascular complications you can say right so let me move ahead let me first teach you diabetic ketoacidosis and hyperosmolar hyperglycemic non-ketotic coma so that these two complications i will teach you first the pathogenesis let me start uh, let me start the diabetic ketoacidosis the acute complication which occurs mostly in type 1 diabetes now in type 1 diabetes what is the problem i have already explained you the mechanism the pathogenesis of type 1 diabetes can anyone tell me what is the problem in type 1 diabetes in type 1 diabetes you can say that ma'am insulin is absent the beta cell of the pancreas are destroyed by body's own immunity type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease so in that the body's own immunity destroying the beta cell of the pancreas so insulin is practically technically absent in these person since insulin is absent glucose cannot move to the target organ the three target organs you already know the adipose tissue the muscle and the liver in them glucose is not moving so you can see there is a cross mate so glucose is not moving from the blood due to the insulin deficiency or insulin absence glucose is not moving to these three organs right now because glucose is not moving to these three organs here in the adipose tissue in the adipose tissue due to insulin deficiency the adipose tissue uh, there is lipoprotein lipase enzyme present lipoprotein lipase enzyme present in adipose tissue it will get activated and it will cause the uh, breakdown of the adipose tissue it will convert all the fat present in the adipose tissue into free fatty acid all the free fatty acid will go to the liver so in the adipose tissue the fat get converted into free fatty acid by enzyme lipoprotein lipase which get activated by insulin deficiency so if insulin is absent in the person in type 1 the insulin is absent it is deficient it is absent so lipoprotein lipase present in the fat will get activated and degrade the fat into free fatty acid 
so free fatty acid will come in the blood via blood it will go in the liver in the liver this free fatty acid will convert it will convert into fatty acyl coenzyme a so the free fatty acid reach the liver and they are esterified to fatty acyl coenzyme a and fatty acyl fatty acyl coa is formed from free fatty acid inside the liver right so oxidation of fatty acyl coenzyme a leads to the formation of ketone bodies and it leads to the formation of ketone bodies the three ketone bodies will be formed in the liver in the liver the three ketone bodies are formed name the three ketone bodies so it is uh, out of the three only two are formed name the two it is acetoacetic acid and beta hydroxybutyric acid these two ketone bodies are produced in the liver so what is actually happening have you got it so due to the insulin deficiency or insulin absence in the adipose tissue lipoprotein lipase enzyme will get activated so whatever fat is present in the adipose tissue is converted is degraded is is, is uh, you know degraded into small portions into free fatty acid all the free fatty acid will come in the blood from the blood this free fatty acid will move to the liver it will move to the liver and in the liver this free fatty acid will be uh, esterified into fatty acyl coa after that this fatty acyl coa undergo oxidation and form ketone bodies which two ketone bodies acetoacetic acid and beta hydroxybutyric acid these two ketone bodies formed in the liver and come in the blood so when the ketone bodies are formed in the liver and the rate of formation is more as compared to the rate of utilization rate of formation is more than the rate of utilization so these ketone bodies spill to the blood and causing ketonemia ketonemia means ketone bodies in the blood from the liver they are coming in the blood so blood is full of ketone bodies and from blood they are going to the kidney for excretion and they are excreted in urine so ketonemia leads to ketonuria please mind my words first ketonemia takes place and then ketonuria takes place ketone body in blood followed by ketone bodies in urine because first it is in liver from liver it is coming in blood from blood it is going to the kidney for excretion and it is going to the urine right so this is if urinary excretion of ketone bodies is uh, com uh, is compromised by dehydration you know ketone ketone bodies the two ketone bodies uh, the uh, as what are the two ketone bodies acetoacetic acid and beta hydroxy uh, butyric acid these two ketone bodies are osmotic in nature what do you mean by osmotic they drag water along with it so ketone bodies are excreted in urine i agree but they do not go alone they will take water with it so all the water present in the body in the blood vessel will be dragged along with the <coughs> ketone bodies this is known as osmotic diuresis osmotic so ketone bodies are causing osmotic diuresis so all the water is also excreted in the urine so patient will have dehydration the patient will have dehydration because of dehydration patient will have metabolic ketoacidosis this is known as because of dehydration and ketone bodies are more in the blood now and ketone bodies are acidic in nature so patient have more acid in the blood and metabolic ketoacidosis along with dehydration it is taking place right so this is known as metabolic uh, uh, ketoacidosis have you got it have you got it so what it is taking place so see the first due to insulin deficiency insulin is deficient and glucagon is an excess in the adipose tissue the first thing which is taking place in the lipid in the adipose tissue there is more lipolysis that is degradation of the lipid degradation of the fat it leads to the formation of fatty acids more free fatty acids all the free fatty acids will go to the liver in the liver there is oxidation of free fatty acid it will lead to the formation of ketone bodies the two ketone bodies are formed you should learn the name so it is acetoacetic acid and beta hydroxybutyric acid these two are formed more and acetone is formed very uh, less so there are three ketone bodies out of the three the two are formed more so because ketone bodies are acidic in nature it is it is leading to acidosis number one so these acidosis number one it is leading to acidosis right and uh, number two these ketone bodies after coming in blood they are going in urine also they are going in urine causing osmotic diuresis they are dragging water along with it glucose is also going in the urine the excess glucose so glucose and ketone body both are osmotic in nature they are going in urine causing diuresis the osmotic diuresis patient will have dehydration patient will have dehydration because of the two things what are the two things number one dehydration number two acidosis and blood patient can go in coma and death patient can go in coma this is known as diabetic ketoacidosis the complete uh, mechanism of diabetic ketoacidosis you should understand it everyone give me a thumbs up if you got the mechanism of diabetic ketoacidosis so same thing is shown to you here also diabetic ketoacidosis now what are the clinical features patient will have during diabetic ketoacidosis just suppose there is a diabetic patient diabetic mellitus type 1 patient and uh, uh, he is going in diabetic ketoacidosis so during diabetic ketoacidosis patient will feel extreme fatigue 
patient will feel nauseated and vomiting patient have severe abdominal pain and there is a uh, you know a fruity odor in the breathing ketone bodies have a fruity odor so there is a peculiar fruity odor in the breathing and the breathing is labored the breathing is labored this is known as small breathing it is an mcq please learn please learn and eventually the patient will go in coma the patient can go in uh, depressed cerebral consciousness and patient can go in coma and death so these are the clinical features now what is the treatment what is the treatment now such patient is coming to your clinic in an emergency patient is having small breathing patient is having labored breathing severe abdominal pain nausea vomiting and patient is going in coma and you have measured the blood glucose level it is more than 600 more than 500 grams more than 600 grams per deciliter so patient is in you got the thing the patient is in uh, uh, diabetic ketoacidosis now what treatment you will offer in ketoacidosis so number one the everything is happening due to deficiency of insulin the complete mechanism is happening due to insulin deficiency so first administer insulin so everything will reverse so first thing administer insulin number one administer insulin so everything the mechanism will stop there and it will not act further so it is taking place because of the absence of insulin or deficiency of insulin if insulin is adequate this whole thing will not take place so everything is happening due to insulin deficiency right so give insulin number one give insulin number two if there is acidosis now you correct the acidosis by making the blood alkaline so you reverse the acidosis so two things are there in the treatment you have to give administer insulin and correction of the acidosis by giving NaOH or some alkaline fluid right so okay uh, now this why you should ask me a question that ma'am why that diabetic ketoacidosis is more common in type 1 diabetes as compared to type 2 diabetes why in type 2 diabetes it is very rare as i have told you if you have remembered the pathogenesis of the two type of diabetes type 1 and type 2 you can understand the answer by yourself in type 1 diabetes uh, i have told you that uh, <coughs> insulin is deficient or absent in type 2 diabetes insulin is never zero rather in initially in honeymoon period it will increase and then when the beta cell will exhaust it it will decrease to compensate first it will increase so here insulin is never zero never zero that's why now the whole mechanism of diabetic ketoacidosis is due to insulin deficiency or insulin absence here insulin is never absent because of high portal vein insulin level in these patients liver may oxidation of free fatty acid do not take place oxidation of free fatty acid in liver will take place in insulin deficiency here insulin deficiency is not taking place that is the problem right so diabetic ketoacidosis is more common in type 1 diabetes as compared to type 2 diabetes i am done with diabetic ketoacidosis should i summarize what do you mean by that <clears throat> diabetic ketoacidosis mein ho kya raha what is actually happening in diabetic ketoacidosis so in type 1 diabetes mellitus actually the insulin is absent insulin is technically absent or very deficient because of insulin deficiency lipoprotein lipase enzyme will get activated in adipose tissue and in adipose tissue it converts the fat into free fatty acid all these free fatty acid move to the liver and in the liver free fatty acid ka beta oxidation will take place and ketone bodies are formed the two ketone bodies are formed you know the names the two ketone bodies are formed now these ketone bodies will come in the blood and cause ketonemia ketonemia and after that it will go in the urine and cause ketone ketonuria ketonuria so first ketonemia leads to ketonuria ketonuria may in ketonuria uh, the ketone bodies are excreted in urine but they will drag water along with it right so two complications will take place ketone bodies in the blood causing acidosis they are acidic in nature they cause acidosis metabolic acidosis and these are dragging water along with them in the urine so causing dehydration causing dehydration so acidosis and dehydration together leads to coma in the brain and coma can lead to the death so this is the complete mechanism of diabetic ketoacidosis which is more common in type 1 diabetes as compared to type 2 i want thumbs up from everyone if you got the mechanism of action of diabetic ketoacidosis then i should move to the next complication that is hyperosmolar hyperglycemic non ketotic coma yahan pe ketone bodies nahi aayengi still patient will go in coma in the last scenario patient was going in coma because of ketone bodies in the blood here it is non ketotic there are no ketone bodies in the blood still patient is going in the coma so patient is going in coma because of hyperglycemia and hyperosmolar state right so here it is more common in type 2 diabetes in type 2 diabetes this complication is more common it is known as hyperosmolar hyperglycemic syndrome or coma right now here also uh you have seen that the blood of the diabetic person this is a blood vessel of a diabetic person type 2 diabetes the blood vessel of diabetic person have excess of glucose because this glucose cannot enter 
into the target organs. The target organs are liver, skeletal muscle and adipose tissue. Liver, skeletal muscle, now this glucose, usually this glucose enter into these three organs and stored inside these three organs because insulin is present. Now, if insulin is present in the blood, if insulin is present in the blood, this insulin will go to its receptor. The receptors of insulin are present here in these three organs. These are the three target organs. Insulin will go to its receptor and make a door for the glucose, make an entry point for the glucose. So, glucose can enter into these and get stored. But here the receptor is defective. Insulin is not absent. It is present. I am talking about type 2 diabetes. In type 2 diabetes, there is no deficiency of insulin. It is excessive in amount, but it is resistant. Its receptor is defective on the target organ. So, on the target organ, the receptor of the insulin is defective. So, glucose cannot enter into these three target organs. So, where the glucose will go? Excess amount of glucose is present in the blood. It is causing hyperglycemia. The patient is having hyperglycemia. Hyperglycemia and all the glucose from the blood vessel will move to the kidney for excretion. All the glucose is moving to the kidney for excretion. So, it is from hyperglycemia, it will cause glycosuria. Glycosuria. So, first the glucose is more in the blood and then glucose is more in the urine. But again, it is an osmolar molecule, osmotic molecule. It will not go alone. It will drag water along with it, right? So, all the water is also excreted in the urine causing osmotic diuresis. So, patient will have severe dehydration and severe dehydration here is leading to coma. Coma is not due to ketone bodies. Here, ketone bodies are absent. The coma is due to severe dehydration. So, hyperglycemia leads to glycosuria, leads to dehydration leading to coma. Have you got it? That is in type 2, type 2 diabetes. So, in type 2 diabetes, it is the severe dehydration which is resulting from osmotic diuresis, right? So, that is osmotic diuresis ki wajah se severe dehydration, the patient is going in the coma, right? So, here it occurs when the blood glucose level are 600 to 1200 milligram per deciliter. Have you got it? So, 600 to 1200 milligram per deciliter is the blood glucose level at which this takes place. So, it is diabetic ketoacidosis and hyperosmolar, hyperglycemic, uh, non-ketotic coma. These are the two complications. It takes place in type 1 diabetes. It is more frequent in type 2 diabetes. I have explained you the mechanism of both. Have you got it? So, there are two patients in front of me. This is diabetes mellitus type 1. This is diabetes mellitus type 2. So, let me explain you the revi revision of the mechanism or the pathogenesis of the two complications, two type of diabetes. In type 1 diabetes, okay, let me start in type 1 diabetes, okay, the insulin is absent. Insulin is absent. Since insulin is absent or it is severely deficient, so lipoprotein lipase enzyme present in the adipose tissue will get activated and convert the fat into free fatty acid. The free fatty acid formed will move to the liver. It will move to the liver and in the liver, this free fatty acid get oxidized, beta oxidized and convert into ketone bodies, the two type of ketone bodies. These ketone bodies, these ketone bodies first come in the blood that is known as ketonemia and from the blood it will go in the urine that is ketonuria. So, ketonemia results in ketonuria, ketonuria, ketonemia results in ketonuria, right? From the urine. It will be excreted, but if it excretes, it is osmotic molecule. So, it will drag water along with it. So, it will cause osmotic diuresis. Because of osmotic diuresis, it is leading to two things. What are the two things? Osmotic diuresis ki wajah se hoga dehydration. Patient have dehydration. And blood mein ketone bodies ki wajah se hoga acidosis. Acidosis. So, dehydration and acidosis together leading to coma and death. So, that is the mechanism of action of diabetic ketoacidosis. It is known as diabetic ketoacidosis. It occurs in diabetes. Keto means it is due to ketone bodies and metabolic acidosis in the blood. So, please split the term and understand the meaning of it. Coming on type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes. There is a patient of type 2 diabetes. In type 2 diabetes, the insulin is not deficient. Insulin is adequate. Insulin is initially adequate or it is more. It is not deficient, right? But here in type 2 diabetes, if blood glucose level are more than 600 to 1200 milligram per deciliter, it is high. Normal blood glucose level, you know, the fasting uh, should be less than 100 and the postprandial should be less than uh, 150, right? So, uh, it is much more than the fasting and postprandial levels. It is 600 to 1200 milligram per deciliter. So, what will happen? So, patient is having severe hyperglycemia. Hyperglycemia means more glucose in the blood. From the, here, the glucose will go in the urine and it will cause glycosuria. Glycosuria. Now, please understand, it was more glucose in the blood 
and now more glucose in the urine the same situation it was happening with ketone body in ketone body first the ketone body is more in blood than in urine that is ketonemia and ketonuria here first the glucose is more in blood than it, it is more in urine it is hyperglycemia and glycosuria right now again like ketone bodies the glucose is also a osmotic molecule so it will drag water along with it so it leads to osmotic diuresis yahan pe bhi osmotic diuresis tha yahan pe bhi osmotic diuresis hai yahan pe osmotic diuresis ki wajah se patient will have dehydration and dehydration is leading to coma there is dehydration is the cause which is leading to coma here here dehydration along with acidosis is the cause here acidosis is not taking place because here uh, ketone bodies are absent so i want thumbs up from everyone if you got the mechanism of or pathogenesis of the two complications so this complication is known as diabetic ketoacidosis dka in type 1 diabetes and this complication is known as hyperosmolar hyperglycemic coma or syndrome it takes place in type 2 diabetes so give me a thumbs up a big thumbs up i tried my best to explain you the two acute complication of the diabetes if we are done with the acute complication let's come on the late complication of the diabetes let's come on the late complication of the diabetes yeah before that i would like to tell you the most uh, dangerous complication of over treating of type 1 or type 2 both diabetes is hypoglycemia in type 1 as well as type 2 the patient is having hyperglycemia that is blood glucose level are more na in type 1 also in type 2 also just suppose you are over treating this patient you are over treating you are giving insulin you are giving insulin to treat this hyperglycemia but insulin doses are inappropriate insulin doses should be monitored regularly ha huh? so if you are giving more insulin as required so from hyperglycemia patient is going in hypoglycemia because of over treatment you are giving more doses of insulin over treating the patient so you know never over treat the patient or you are giving oral hypoglycemic drug in high doses or if at normal doses also of insulin patient is taking the injection of insulin but missing the meal immediately after insulin patient should eat something na but patient is missing the meal just suppose uh, i am a type 1 diabetic my lunch time is 2 o'clock so at um, quarter to 2 o'clock i will take my insulin injection i will give subcutaneous injection and after 10 minutes 15 minutes i will have my lunch my lunch is ready i have given insulin to myself but i got a phone call doctor there is an emergency please come fast or i i skip the meal i have taken the insulin i forgot to take the meal or in hurry or in some tension i just escaped it i just escaped it and moved along right so what will happen at that time insulin is already there in the body so it will cause hypoglycemia but food is not there so it will cause severe hypoglycemia so hypoglycemia is a very dangerous condition right ironically the most common complication of acute metabolic complication is either type of diabetes is hypoglycemia in both type it can result either missing a meal or excessive exercise after taking insulin the patient is doing excessive exercise or excess dose of the insulin right all these situation can lead to hypoglycemia in hypoglycemia what will happen if blood glucose level if blood glucose level this is the blood vessel of a person either type 1 or type 2 the glucose level is less than 70 or normal level it should it should be 70 to 100 right if it is less than 70 if it occurs more less than 50 mg per deciliter what will happen what will happen the adrenal adrenal gland will get stimulated you know humans have a pair of kidney and above the kidney there is adrenal adrenal these adrenal glands will get stimulated and there is sympathetic stimulation there is sympathetic adrenaline will come in the blood there is sympathetic stimulation that will cause they are due to the hypoglycemia okay let's come first the less glucose is going in the brain in the brain there is less glucose which is going that will cause dizziness and confusion so patient will feel dizzy patient will feel confused right now because of sympathetic stimulation patient will have sweating palpitation and tachycardia so these two symptoms are due to less glucose in the blood uh, in the brain brain don't have storage if brain is getting constant energy from the glucose currently i am speaking with you i am teaching you i am using my brain my brain is working my brain is functional because my blood levels have adequate amount of glucose which is providing energy to the brain the neurons but if blood have deficiency of glucose hypoglycemia the brain don't have any storage so brain will do the dizziness there is dizziness or confusion to the patient due to hypoglycemia the first symptoms after that immediately to say no it is a life threatening condition patient can go immediately in coma brain don't have storage if brain don't get blood for 8 minutes patient can die patient can go in coma and die so patient a person don't have storage of energy in the brain so it is a emergency condition so body will stimulate the sympathetic system and adrenaline noradrenaline will come it will be flushed in the blood 
that sympathetic stimulation is causing sweating palpitation and tachycardia you know when sympathetic system is uh, um, coming in role so these are the symptoms of sympathetic stimulation so patient suddenly feels sweating all over the body patient will have palpitation high heart rate and patient have tachycardia right if hypoglycemia persists patient can lose the consciousness and patient can go in coma what treatment you should offer immediately you should give glucose whatever sweet thing available in front of you please give it to the patient if sugar is available glucose is available give that directly give some chocolate some sweetener anything right that is that you can give that through oral route and if the patient is already unconscious you cannot give with oral route now if patient is conscious you can give with oral route but if patient is unconscious you can give iv glucose iv glucose it can prevent the permanent neurological damage otherwise patient will have permanent neurological dam damage if for few more minutes it is not hours few more minutes patient do not get glucose right so it is an emergency hypoglycemia is an emergency never over treat a diabetic person you can under treat you can do the under treatment thoda sa normal se zyada glucose hoga chalega but never over treat if you over treat there is always a risk of hypoglycemia right that that is the most dangerous complication of over treating of diabetic patient now let's come on the late complication okay okay Be late complications i am not teaching you the three i will teach you the pathogenesis of the complication usme late complications aapko samajh jayega the mechanism of the diabetic nephropathy neuropathy and retinopathy so let me come on the complication of the diabetes why the diabetic patient have di the three organs involved the diabetic retinopathy diabetic nephropathy and neuropathy these three are the main complications why it is occurring why these three organs are involved why what is actually happening so there are three mechanisms three pathogenesis of the complication you should understand so all three are important now very few students understand such in depth knowledge you know they learn the complication but they don't know why why they are happening the answer of why i am giving now everyone know in diabetes the three complications occur the nephropathy neuropathy and retinopathy but very few of you may be knowing why it is occurring okay let me answer this why as the pathogenesis of the complication why complications are happening there are three mechanisms one by one we will discuss number one is non enzymatic protein glycosylation okay uh, non enzymatic protein glycosylation ka meaning kya hota hai okay listen now everyone listen now human blood in a diabetic person in a diabetic person both type 1 and type 2 both of them have excess of sugar in the blood agree or not agree sugar means glucose i am talking about glucose whether it is type 1 diabetes or type 2 diabetes both of them have hyperglycemia both of them have excessive glucose or excessive sugar in the blood right in the blood we have various proteins also in various tissues we have various proteins humans have various proteins in various tissue humans have collagen humans have hemoglobin all these are proteins now if excess of sugar is present in the blood that will combine with the protein non enzymatically the protein normal proteins of the body and form a gly glycated protein it is known as glycated protein can you see sugar like hb1ac what is hb1ac hb1ac have you heard about the hb1ac molecule which is formed in the diabetic person hb1ac hemoglobin is the protein which is glycated by the sugar excess sugar present in diabetes so here the protein can be hemoglobin it can be other proteins also right so here it is non enzymatically so non enzymatically glycation is the process in which glucose is chemically bound with the amino groups of the protein without the agency of enzyme right without the so a sugar protein complex is formed this sugar protein complex which is formed it is causing the dangerous results right so this is the free amino group of the various protein bind with the glucose non enzymatically and this is known as glycosylation glycosylation because of which the, the combination is just formed this combination of sugar and protein it is known as age age advanced glycosylation end products it is known as age a g e what is age say the full form of age it is a combination of protein and sugar which are combined together non enzymatically no enzyme is required for this combination if sugar is excessive in blood it will combine with protein in various organs and form ages ages means advanced glycosylated advanced glycosylated end products and these ages are directly proportional to hyperglycemia कितना एजेस कितना बनेगा जितना ज्यादा शुगर उतना एजेस क्योंकि प्रोटीन तो बहुत है वी हैव अबंडेंट ऑफ प्रोटीन इन ह्यूमन बॉडी द मोर शुगर इन द ब्लड मोर एजेस विल बी फॉर्म एंड व्हाट डस दिस एजेस विल डू वेरियस प्रोटीन्स ऑफ द बॉडी कैन टेक टेक दिस इन द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ एजेस मोस्ट कॉमन हीमोग्लोबिन आई हैव ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू द लेंथ ऑफ द आई 
so lens of the eye can have cataract and diabetes right basement membrane of various body cell which is made up of collagen so collagen is also a protein hemoglobin is also a protein lens is also made up of a protein of the eye so all these will form ages inside them and these ages ages are pathological they are dangerous they will cause the disease what is the effect of the ages agar ages ban bhi gaye to usse problem kya hai these ages will cause um activation of ros reactive oxygen species free radical are, are formed they have pro coagulant activity in short they are dangerous they will cause damage to the human body by various mechanism now you can learn the mechanism by your own if you want if you don't want to learn it's okay but these ages are not good they are causing they are causing many hazardous effects in human body so that is the first mechanism of the complication give me a thumbs up so the first mechanism of persistent hyperglycemia if there is more glucose in the blood it will combine non enzymatically glycosylation with the proteins because of the combination of protein and sugar ages are formed what is the full form of ages it is advanced glycosylation end product ages ages this ages will cause various harmful effects increase cytokines ecm synthesis increase vascular permeability right collagen se combined hoga and it will cause various harmful effects diabetic nephropathy is one of the result diabetic neuropathy is one, one of the result right uh, retinopathy neuropathy dono mein it results from the formation of uh, ages with the collagen of the basement membrane so collagen of the basement membrane nephropathy mein glomerulus basement membrane will be destroyed because of formation of ages and it will result in diabetic nephropathy neuropathy mein in the nerves there is more cytokines ecm permeability that will destroy the nerves and that will cause diabetic neuropathy so i hope and atherosclerosis may be the ages uh, are formed in the collagen inside the blood vessels so in the blood vessels the lumen of the blood vessels these ages are formed and they lead to atherosclerosis atherogenesis so these are the mechanism of the complication the first mechanism is ages formation non enzymatically protein glycosylation it will result in age formation and this age is causing diabetic nephropathy and neuropathy that is the first coming on the second mechanism polyol poly ओल ओल क्या होता है वॉट यू मीन बाई ओल इन केमिस्ट्री यू हैव स्टडीड द ओल ना ओल इज अ सफिक्स विच इज गिवन टू एल्कोहल है अल होता है ओइक एसिड होता है दीज आर द सफिक्स ना ओल इज अ सफिक्स विच इज गिवन टू एल्कोहल आई गेस एल्कोहल लेट मी चेक यस ओल सो एक्चुअली वॉट इज हैपनिंग हियर द एक्सेस ग्लूकोज विच इज प्रेजेंट इन द ब्लड इट गेट कन्वर्टेड इन टू सॉर्बिटो and sorbitol get converted into fructose so more and more fructose is formed in the blood right so more and more sorbitol sorbitol ol sorbitol ka ol hai ye ol that is polyol poly multiple poly means multiple ol is formed right so actually what is happening in some tissue uh, persistent hyperglycemia leads to excess sorbitol formation sorbitol is a polyol and eventually sorbitol get converted into fructose so sorbitol and fructose are formed from excess glucose so what does the sorbitol and fructose are doing what they do what they do these both are osmotic molecules super osmotic molecules even more osmotic than glucose they result in entry they will drag water jahan pe ye dono hai ye pani khichenge actually imagine a cell this is a cell this is the nucleus of the cell now inside this cell the glucose cannot enter no just a second let me make a blood vessel just a second this is a blood vessel inside the blood vessel excess of glucose is present this glucose due to the insulin deficiency cannot enter in the cell so glucose will get converted glucose will get converted into sorbitol and fructose this sorbitol and fructose is entering in the cell they do not require insulin for entry glucose in the cell require insulin for the entry but insulin is absent so glucose directly cannot enter the cell but sorbitol and fructose glucose get converted into sorbitol and fructose and it will enter the cell this is polyol poly polyol right and these are osmotic molecule when they come inside they will drag water in the blood from the blood they will also drag water with them h2o with them so more and more more water will come in the cell because of the formation of sorbitol and fructose and entry in the blood so cell will swell cell will swell cell will swell cell will burst cell will burst and because of the burst of the cell it will result in pathogenesis of the disease have you got it cell swelling it will result in burst so intracellular accumulation of sorbitol and fructose have you got it so this is the mechanism so because of persistent hyperglycemia the glucose get converted into sorbitol and eventually get converted into fructose and these sorbitol and glucose cause intracellular accumulation they will drag water with them because these are osmotic molecules 
so they cause cell swelling 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 cell burst cell damage give me a thumbs up and the enzymes required for the formation of sorbitol and fructose are in front of you for conversion of glucose to sorbitol we require aldose reductase and for conversion of sorbitol to fructose we require sorbitol dehydrogenase so aldose reductase and sorbitol dehydrogenase these are the enzymes present in the blood have you got it so you can see it is in front of you you can see this is increased glucose in the blood this increased glucose in the blood get converted first in sorbitol and sorbitol get converted into the fructose right now which enzymes are required they are in front of you have you got it so the second mechanism is insulin independent glucose entry in the tissue now normal glucose entry in the tissue require insulin right but glucose get converted into sorbitol and sorbitol get converted into fructose with the help of the enzyme aldose reductase so fructose is not important nahi hai, sorbitol is more important so sorbitol will go in the cell increase entry of water due to osmosis so orbitol is a osmotic molecule it will drag water with it so it will cause swelling of the cell swelling of the cell in the retina of the eye swelling of the cell in the schwann cells of the nerves so it will lead to retinopathy and neuropathy so cells of the retina will burst because of cell swelling swell the schwann cells of the nerves will burst because of uh, cell swelling so cell swelling ki wajah se retina aur nerves ke cell burst ho jayenge leading to diabetic retinopathy and neuropathy have you got it so this mechanism nephropathy explain nahi ho raha but retinopathy neuropathy can be explained by this mechanism aur ages ke formation se we can explain nephropathy and neuropathy to neuropathy dono mein common hai neuropathy ka mechanism ye bhi hai age formation and neuropathy ka mechanism polyol formation दोनों मैकेनिज्म न्यूरोपैथी तो दोनों जगह है न्यूरोपैथी राइट बट रेटिनोपैथी इज ड्यू टू पॉलीओल फॉर्मेशन एंड नेफ्रोपैथी इज ड्यू टू एजेस आई होप यू आर गेटिंग माय पॉइंट कमिंग ऑन द लास्ट मैकेनिज्म एक्टिवेशन ऑफ प्रोटीन सी प्रोटीन काइनेस सी प्रोटीन काइनेस सी इज अ एंजाइम इट इज अ एंजाइम व्हिच इज प्रेजेंट इन ब्लड यूजुअली इट इज इनएक्टिव यूजुअली इट इज इनएक्टिव बट ड्यू टू इंट्रासेल्युलर हाइपरग्लाइसीमिया अबंडेंट ऑफ ग्लूकोस इट स्टिमुलेट्स डी नोवो सिंथेसिस ऑफ डैक DAG diacetyl glycerol is formed and that causes the activation of PKC that is protein kinase C and this protein kinase C by various mechanism it will cause diabetic complications so that it will cause retinopathy neuropathy nephropathy so what are the three complications basically what is the pathogenesis of the three th what are the three pathogenesis which leads to neuropathy nephropathy uh, retinopathy and atherosclerosis can anyone enumerate the three complications the first complication is formation of age advanced glycosylated end products advanced glycosylated end products which is formed by non enzymatic combination of protein and glucose excessive glucose combined with protein and non enzymatically they will form complexes these complexes will can be formed with various protein the name of the protein here can be collagen you can say the basement membrane of the uh, glomerulus so it can lead to nephropathy it can be lens of the eye so it can cause the lens defect the cataract in the eye or there there can be hemoglobin it, it will lead to hb1 ac formation so protein can be various it can cause damage to various tissue it can lead to nephropathy uh, not na ye nephropathy and neuropathy right not retinopathy that is ages formation the second mechanism here is polyol polyol means ol ol ka matlab hai sorbitol sorbitol ol ol polyol mein multiple sorbitol so that is polyol formation so glucose get converted into sorbitol and sorbitol will enter in the cell so it will drag water along with it in the cell so cell will swell 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 it will burst so cell in the retina will burst leading to retinopathy cell in the nerves the schwann cells in the nerve will burst leading to neuropathy that is polyol formation and the third mechanism is protein protein kinase protein kinase c activation protein kinase c there is protein kinase a b c it is c activation right so excessive glucose leads to dag formation and dag will cause the activation of pkc and pkc by various mechanism causes the various complication of the diabetes so these are the three complications i hope you go all got it it is age formation that is non enzymatic glycosylation it is polyol formation and it is protein kinase c activation leading to the all complication of the diabetes i want thumbs up from everyone very few students will be able can able to understand this complication actually combine complications everyone knows but what is the pathogenesis of the complication very few students knows and how they actually happening you should be able to answer that have you got it now give me a thumbs up if you got it everyone give me a thumbs up if you got it let me come on the morphology let me come on the morphology what do you mean by morphology i will teach you morphology in three organs pancreas uh diabetic macrovascular disease and nephropathy let me start with pancreas what is actually happening in the pancreas now if you take the pancreas or if you do the biopsy of pancreas in a diabetic person 
what you will see what you will see in type 1 what you will see in type 2 in type 1 in the pancreas there is reduction in number of the islet of cells now because beta cells are destroyed type 1 mein destruction ho hai. type 2 mein compensation ki wajah se pehle hypertrophy ho hai, baad mein atrophy ho hai. but there is no destruction right so in type 1 you will see there is reduction in number reduction in number of islet of langerhans right so in type 1 diabetes in type 2 diabetes also there is reduction in number but there is never zero. There is never zero. Okay, inflammation kis mein hoga? Inflammation dono mein hoga. That is insulitis. Insulin ka inflammation, itis. Inflammation of the islet of Langerhans. It is known as insulitis, right? That you can see basically in type 1. Because type 1 mein it is an autoimmune disease na? So inflammation basically aapko waha dekhega. Amyloid deposition basically occurs in type 2. So that you can see in the two type of the pancreas. In this pancreas, you can see the pink color structure. <coughs> can you appreciate this pink color structure? Amorphous structure. A cellular, this is amyloid deposit, deposition. It is type 2. Amyloid occurs in type 2. In type 1, can you see this is the islet of Langerhans? Can you see the inflammation? Please appreciate these small, small cells. These all are lymphocytes. So there is inflammation. There is inflammation. It is known as insulitis. It is known as insulitis, which occurs in type 1 diabetes, autoimmune disorder, insulitis. This is insulitis. So this is the diagram of insulitis and this is the diagram of amyloid. This is the diagram of pancreas of type 1. Diabetes, this is the diagram of pancreas of type 2 diabetes. So type 1 ka hallmark hai insulitis or type 2 ka hallmark hai amyloid in the pancreas. So these two can come in the form of image based question in your exam. So you will be able to solve all these, right? So image based question may if pancreas ka islet of Langerhans showing inflammation, inflammation it is type 1 and if it is showing the pink color amorphous material, acellular material deposition that is amyloid, it is type 2. I want thumbs up from everyone. So the summary of the pancreas is that in type 1 diabetes, in type 2 diabetes. In type 1, you will find insulitis. That is inflammation by lymphocytes in the, in the pancreas. In type 2, you will get amyloid in the pancreas. Everyone give me a thumbs up. I am doing your concepts crystal clear without having a single doubt. Let me come on diabetic macrovascular complication. Diabetic macrovascular complication, I mean blood vessels. Let me talk about blood vessels. I will teach you uh okay macrovascular complication give me a minute so let me move on the diabetic macrovascular complication may i will teach you diabetic nephropathy i will di directly mm, macrovascular you can leave it's my coach zada nahi hai. first i will teach you diabetic nephropathy diabetic nephropathy now what will happen in the kidney in the kidney these are the lesions which are taking place now first i will teach you what is happening in the glomerulus what is happening in the tubules? What is happening in the blood vessels? So see, there are two. There are two things. Uh, there are two types of kidney lesions. One is diffuse. One is nodular. One is diffuse. One is nodular. Diffuse and nodular are the two forms in diabetic glomerulosclerosis. Diffuse form is more common, and it is known as diffuse because all parts of the glomerulus are involved. So this is the diagram of the diffuse. Can you see a glomerulus? Yes, of course you can see a glomerulus. Now highline. The word highline is deposited at four places. It is diffuse now. It is deposited at four places. Number one, it is deposited in the mesangium. It is deposited in the mesangial matrix. You can see it is deposited in the capillary, in the wall of the capillary in the form of cap. Can you see this is a capillary and capillary have a cap of highline. This capillary also have a cap of highline. This capillary also have a cap of highline. Can you see it is known as capillary drop or capillary cap. Capillary cap known as fibrin cap. So number two capillaries, number two capillaries. Number three, basement membrane. The basement membrane is also thickened. The red colored basement membrane I have drawn now. So appreciate the basement membrane everywhere. Basement membrane everywhere. Basement membrane everywhere. So this basement membrane is also thickened and having uh, the highline. That is thickened basement membrane. And number four, the, four, the Bowman's capsule. Can you appreciate the Bowman's capsule I am drawing? The Bowman's capsule may be, can you see? Here is highline deposition. Here is highline deposition. Hai. It is known as capsular drop. So these are the four places where the highline deposition is. Mesangial matrix, capillary cap, glomerulus basement membrane and capsular drop, the Bowman's capsule. So it is known as diffuse. So in diffuse at four places, at four places, we have highline deposition. Number one, the basement membrane. Number two, the Bowman's capsule. Number three, the capillary, the capillary, the wall of a capillary and number four, mesangial matrix. In sub may highline deposition and that's why known as diffuse. Let me come on nodular. Now this is the diagram of the nod nodular you can see. Here also we have highline deposition but not everywhere in the form of the nodules. Can you see one nodule, two nodule, three nodule, four nodule. We have nodules. 
so that is hyaline deposition in the form of the nodules nodular hyaline deposition in the matrix not everywhere it is not there in the basement membrane it is not there in the capillary it is not there in the bowman's capsule you see bowman's capsule is normal it is not there in the bowman's capsule so it is known as nodular the nodular ka dusra naam hai kw kidney kimmelston wilson kidney kw kidney it is also known as kw kidney it is more specific it is pathognomonic feature more common more common is diffuse but more specific is nodular have you got it have you got it here it is in the form of the nodule the nodule are ovoid or spherical in shape laminated hyaline acellular masses you see they are laminated they are hyaline acellular masses in the form of the spherical or ovoid shape so that is diabetic glomerulus glomerulus mein do cheeze hain ek to diffuse ek nodular diffuse mein kya hai uh, the hyaline is deposited at four places right and nodule mein hyaline is deposited only at one place in the form of the nodule वहां पे फोर प्लेसेस क्या है नंबर वन ग्लोमेरुलर बेसमेंट मेम्ब्रेन नंबर टू कैप्सूल द वुमेन्स कैप्सूल नंबर थ्री कैपिलरी कैपिलरी दैट इज फिब्रिन कैप एंड नंबर फोर कैपिलरी वुमेन मिस एंजल मैट्रिक्स मिस एंजल मैट्रिक्स सो दीज आर द फोर प्लेसेस वेयर डिपॉजिट यहां भी हाईलाइन हो रहा है यहां भी हाईलाइन हो रहा है सो एवरीवेयर ओनली हाईलाइन इज डिपॉजिटेड नॉट नॉट अदर थिंग्स आर डिपॉजिटेड सो ओनली हाईलाइन इज डिपॉजिटेड नॉट अदर थिंग्स राइट सो दैट इज डायबिटिक ग्लोमेरुलो स्क्लेरोसिस इज देयर नंबर टू कमिंग ऑन vascular lesion blood vessels mein kya hoga now see both diagrams are in front of you let me do a comparison of both diagram in the first diagram this is diffuse one in the second it is nodular one diffuse is more common but nodular is more specific pathognomonic is nodular but more common is diffuse nodular ka other name hai kw kidney kimmelston wilson kidney pehle to ye learn karo why diffuse is known as diffuse diffuse mein hyaline deposition at four places mesangial matrix bowman's capsule basement membrane of the capillary basement membrane of the capillary and capillary cap fibrin cap of the capillary can you see so these are the four places that's why known as diffuse nodular may hyaline is deposited only in the form of the oval or spherical laminated nodules acellular nodules not everywhere right so that is the basic difference in the glomerulus let me come on the blood vessels of both of them see here is a blood vessel here is a blood vessel in both of them blood vessel have three walls intima media externa intima is normal in both of them externa is normal in both of them but media of both of them show hyaline deposition so here also here also so in both of them whether diffuse or nodular there is hyaline thickening of the blood vessel hyaline thickening of the media of the blood vessel so blood vessel mein dono mein same hai hyaline atherosclerosis hyaline arteriosclerosis it is taking place in diffuse as, as well as nodular the last thing is tubular lesions can you see the tubules here okay let me draw the tubules at both places okay can you see the tubules here these are the tubules these are the tubules ka lining the tubules i mean pct dct loop of hanley these are the tubules here these are the tubules here these are the tubules here these are the tubules can you see the tubules yes you all can see now inside the tubules can you see what is there inside the tubules there is glycogen deposition uh, appear as vacuoles inside the tubules please appreciate the vacuoles ये वैक्यूल्स अप्रिशिएट करो दीज वैक्यूल्स आर मेड अप ऑफ ग्लाइकोजन इट इज नोन एज इट इज नोन एज अरमानी इप्सटन लेशन इन बोथ ऑफ देम इट इज अरमानी इप्सटन लेशन सो कैन यू सी द समरी इज इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू द टू डायग्राम्स आर इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू अरमानी इप्सटन लेशन दैट इज एक्सेस ऑफ ग्लाइकोजन डिपोजिशन इन द ट्यूब्स दैट इज वैक्यूल्स सो द टू टाइप ऑफ डायबिटिक किडनी आर इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू डायबिटिक नेफ्रोपैथी सो व्हाट इज हैपनिंग इन ग्लोमेरुलस ऑफ बोथ ऑफ देम यू टेल मी द ग्लोमेरुलस इज डिफरेंट इन बोथ ऑफ देम but the blood vessel of both of them is same and the tubules of both of them is same tubules or blood vessel same hai. so can you can you appreciate can you say so what is happening in the uh, what is happening in the blood vessel it is hyaline arteriosclerosis is taking place in the blood vessel what is happening in the tubules of both of them tubules mein armani ipsten lesion is taking in the tubules in both of them but the glomerulus of both of them is different in diffuse the hyaline is deposited at four places mesangial matrix capillary basement membrane capillary cap hyaline cap and bowman's capsule right but in nodular it is deposited only in the form of laminated circular spherical ovoid nodules that's why known as nodular more common is diffuse but most specific or pathognomonic is nodular nodular ka other name hai kw kidney so everything is in front of you you should appreciate it you should appreciate it everyone give me a thumbs up should i move further so that is diabetic nephropathy many questions come from diabetic nephropathy right so we are done with the morphology of the complications also the last but the not least part is diagnosis 
how you will diagnose a patient of diabetes now imagine in your opd there is a patient coming to your opd two patients are coming in your opd let me tell you the details of the two patient the first patient age is 25 years the patient is suddenly having three problems patient will say doctor i am feeling more hungry i am feeling more thirsty and i am having increased urination and uh, within last few months 2 3 kg i have lost weight i have lost weight of 2 3 4 kg so weight loss so these are the complaints given age and complaints are given in front of you there is another patient she is a old old lady 50 year old lady he is a 25 year old male she is a 50 year old lady she is obese she is overweight she is obese she is coming to you with some other complaint and uh, if you are doing the blood test you found the blood glucose level is raised the blood glucose level is raised and she don't have any complaint she is asymptomatic but she is obese she is obese now the two patients are in front of you now both of them you are having suspicion they are diabetic the first person is type 1 diabetes and the second person is type 2 diabetes now you have to treat both of them in the first person the treatment is only one insulin the treatment is only one insulin you have to decide the dose of the insulin in 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 the second person first you advise for diet restriction that eat less sweet less carbohydrate less sweet eat more protein that is diet restriction ask for physical exercise physical activity physical exercise and then give oral hypoglycemic agents the best drug the the uh, most common or best drug to be here in obese patient is metformin if not contraindicated metformin if it's still not controlled then go for the insulin that is a treatment but before offering treatment to this person or this person you should be sure that the person is diabetic so you should make a diagnosis here and here usse pehle diagnosis banana hai so how you will make the diagnosis diagnosis kaise banaoge so in both the person you will take two samples urine and blood here also and urine and blood here also right urine and blood will be the two samples urine blood or others mein baad mein baat karte hain let me start with urine sample urine mein kya kya milega in the urine you will get two things glucose and ketone bodies you will get glucose you will get ketone bodies the glucose in the urine is known as glycosuria ketone bodies in the urine is known as ketoneuria urea urea means in urine right glucose in the urine is glycosuria ketone bodies in the urine is ketoneuria now there is there is a test tube this is a test tube the test tube have urine in it i want to test whether this contain glucose yes or not whether it contains ketone body yes or not so let's test for glycosuria first for glycosuria i am having two tests benedict and dipstick yahan iske liye bhi do test hai mere paas that is benedict test and dipstick dipstick to stick wala hai ketoneuria ke liye the rothera test and dipstick dipstick is a quick test for both of them right dipstick ke liye the sticks are available you know na dipstick ke liye so i will teach you benedict test here for the glucose in urine not in blood please mind my words or rothera test for ketone body in urine not in blood so let's finish urine first then i will come on blood so urine mein i will teach you glycosuria ketoneuria for glycosuria you have to perform benedict test for ketoneuria you have to perform rothera test apart from it we have dipstick test in both of them which is a quick test right okay let me talk, talk about benedict test what is the principle of benedict test benedict test mein kya hota hai we have benedict solution ye benedict solution ka composition kya hai what is the composition of this benedict solution and how we detect uh, sugar or glucose present in the urine right how it how it does. so this benedict solution contain cupric ion which is blue in color that's why benedict a uh, reagent is blue in color it contains cupric ion inside it cupric cupric means copper 3 positive cupric it is present cupric ion inside it that is blue in color right now if you mix this benedict reagent with urine now mix this benedict reagent okay just a second mix this benedict reagent which is blue in color benedict reagent which is blue you can see it is blue in color because it contains cupric ion inside it mix it with urine mix it with your urine with the urine of the patient right now there can be two positive possibilities whether glucose is present in it or glucose is absent glucose matlab nahi sugar sugar either present or absent if sugar is present sugar will reduce the cupric ion to cuprous ion cupric ion will be reduced to cuprous ion cuprous ion have various colors right so benedict agent may cupric ion which is blue in color is converted to cuprous ion if sugar is present if sugar is absent it will not convert it will remain blue only so in the end you have to mix the two thing take 5 ml of benedict reagent mix it with 10 drops of urine mix it with 10 drops of urine so if sugar is absent it will remain blue in the end and heat it 
after mixing heat it so if it if it is if sugar is absent it will remain blue only but if sugar is present it will show change in color the change in color depends on how much sugar is present if sugar is present small amount it will be light blue in color it can be green it can be yellow it can be orange it can be red red if maximum sugar is present so if sugar is 0.5 gram in the urine it is light blue 0.5 to 1 gram it is it is green 1 to 1.5 gram it is yellow 1.5 to 2 gram it is orange more than 2 gram it is red so depending on the quantity of the sugar present in the urine it will give you the different color and the mechanism is same it is the reduction of cupric ion to cuprous ion copper 3 positive is reduced to copper 2 positive in presence of sugar and if sugar is present in the urine this conversion will take place and if sugar is not present in urine this conversion will not take place and this will give you the change in color this is blue in color and this is of different colors the different colors you can learn the sequence like this gyor gyor so green yellow orange red usse pehle to light blue hai so light blue green yellow so blue hai initially it is blue blue set is changing colors to gyor gyor you can say it is light blue still and gyor you can say light blue or light green you can say gyor so it is 0.5 0.5 to 1 1 to 1.5 1.5 to 2 more than 2 so it is like this so please learn so it is gyor gyor is the mnemonic so you can say it is a semi quantitative it is semi quantitative test so mix 5 ml of benedict reagent with 8 to 10 drops of the urine just mix just shake and heat it on heating see the change in color if no change in color no sugar is present if change in color sugar is present and how much is sugar present depending on which color you are obtaining after heating it so that is the procedure take 5 ml of benedict reagent mix it with 8 drop of urine heat it to boiling cool it look for color change so depending on the color change no change in color it is negative greenish light green dark green yellow orange red gyor g g y o r depending on that the amount of urine the amount of sugar in the urine you can say so it is a semi quantitative method the principle is same in all of them in all of them the cupric ion is converting into cuprous ion by sugar that's why this change in color is taking place so if if principle is asked this is the answer if procedure is asked this is the answer this is the interpretation now what is the problem here all sugars not only glucose all sugars do this conversion so glucose fructose maltose lactose all reducing sugars do this conversion not sucrose because sucrose is a non reducing sugar so if in urine any of the reducing sugar is present it will give positivity in the benedict test it is not only glucose in instead of glucose if fructose is present in urine the same results you can obtain instead of fructose maltose is present the same results can be obtained it is not specific for glucose in diabetes we are talking for glucose only not for other sugars but instead of glucose if other sugars are also present any reducing sugar is present it will give the same results so that is the drawback of this test so and what are the causes of glycosuria the most important causes diabetes apart from it renal glycosuria severe burns steroids steroids are the drugs jisme glycosuria hoga severe sepsis pregnancy these are the causes other causes of glycosuria the second test is the dipstick test you know there is a stick given to you and you dip the stick in urine sample take a urine sample and just dip the stick and see the color change the color coding is given to you after sticking after dipping it if you are getting this color this shade this shade this shade see the shade whatever shade you are getting the exact value of sugar in the urine is given to you so again it is a semi quantitative or quantitative method right so that is the thing that is the thing have you got it have you got it that is the first thing okay let me move ahead so we are done with the uh, urine test me glycosuria ho gaya in glycosuria i taught you both things benedict and dipstick 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 we have done both coming on ketonuria how you will test for ketonuria for ketonuria you have a test rothera there is a name of the test known as rothera and dipstick yahan pe bhi hota hai so let me teach you ketonuria ketonuria ke liye rothera and dipstick test rothera test pe aate hain what is the principle of rothera now you have a test tube in your hand having urine in it you want to test whether this urine have ketone bodies present or absent present or absent ketone bodies present or absent that is your question for that you are performing rothera test right so okay uh, the principle is that any ketone body the two ketone bodies which are present in urine acetone or acetoacetic acid they combine with sodium nitroproside both ketone bodies combine with sodium nitroproside and on combination they form a purple complex the combination of the ketone bodies and sodium nitroproside form a purple complex this is the 
this is the uh, thing uh, this is the principle now what you are actually doing take 5 ml of urine in a test tube take a test tube take 5 ml of urine in it have you seen it take 5 ml now saturate the solution with solid ammonium sulfate first pehle solid ammonium sulfate se already saturate kar do it is powder so powder isme dalte jao dalte jao dalte jao till it is dissolving the one point will come at which no more powder will dissolve it will it will precipitate so it is already saturated now now add sodium nitrate to side now add few crystals of sodium nitrate to side and uh, from the test side of the test tube side of the test tube se ye liquid ko dalo yahan se it will form a purple complex if ketone is present if ketone is absent no purple ring is formed so purple ring formation with sodium nitrate proside is the positive test give me a thumbs up that is the interpretation so purple ring a purple or permanganate color ring is formed at the junction at the junction of the urine and sodium nitro proside in dono ke junction pe the junction have a purple ring let me draw a purple ring yeah purple color ring banegi dono ke junction pe so that is the positive test you can see this is the purple ring you can see this is the purple ring i am talking about the purple ring or permanent color ring at the junction of the urine and sodium nitrate proside what is the principle what is the principle the ketone bodies present in the urine when they combine with sodium nitrate proside they form a purple complex so you are putting the sodium nitrate proside from the side of the test tube you may have performed it in your laboratory right and if ketone ring is absent no purple ring is formed if purple ring is formed ketone body is present what are the other causes of ketonuria apart from diabetes डायबिटीज तो है ही है डायबिटीज में तो मिलेगा ही उसके अलावा डिहाइड्रेशन हाइपर एमसिस ग्रेविडेरम यू नो द एक्सेसिव वॉमिटिंग इन प्रेगनेंसी फीवर केकेक्सिया एंड आफ्टर जनरलाइज्ड जनरल एनेस्थीशिया दीज आर द कॉजेस राइट इफ बोथ ग्लाइकोसूरिया एंड कीटोनुरिया न्यूरिया आर प्रेजेंट द डायग्नोसिस ऑफ डायबिटीज इज कंफर्मड इन यूरिन इन यूरिन सो यू हैव डन द यूरिन टेस्ट इन यूरिन यू हैव टेस्टेड फॉर टू थिंग्स नंबर 1 ग्लूकोस नंबर 2 कीटोन बॉडीज फॉर ग्लूकोस वी हैव परफॉर्मड बेनेडिक्ट टेस्ट for ketone bodies we have performed ruthera test if both of them are positive the diagnosis is confirmed you should know the principle of each test the method the interpretation principle method interpretation if you have any doubt please ask me i am done with the urine test let me come on the blood test for the diabetes blood test kaise karoge blood test take a blood sample okay take a blood sample of a diabetic patient now i will test only glucose in it not ketone i will test only glucose but i will test glucose at three different times first i will test glucose fasting fasting what do you mean by fasting patient have not eaten anything from the last 8 hours at least 8 hours equal to or more than 8 hours so usually during the day time we we frequently eat something we have our breakfast then after 2 3 hours we have our lunch after 2 3 4 hours we have snacks then we have our dinner so fasting is only overnight right after dinner we sleep at 11 o'clock 11:30 10 o'clock whatever and in the morning we get up at 6 o'clock 7 o'clock so there is a 8 hour fasting so the first sample in the morning can be considered as fasting sample if you have not the patient has not eating anything during the overnight so that is the fasting blood glucose we will check the second we will check postprandial pp postprandial what do you mean by postprandial we will give adequate uh diet to the patient lunch breakfast or dinner and after 2 hours of the of the diet we will check the blood exactly after 2 hours 2 hours will be counted after the first bite so i am having my plate in front of me for my lunch or dinner so first bite i am taking whatever time i will notice in me after exact 2 hours i will take my blood glucose level that is postprandial and the third one is random random is not related as the word indicate random is not related to the diet whether you are taking fasting postprandial after 1 hour of the diet 2 hour 3 hour 4 hour it is random random so in the blood we will test only for glucose at three different times fasting postprandial and random right so what are the results that will indicate diabetes so we will take test random fasting fasting means fasting for more than 8 hours and 2 hours usually we give 75 g of oral glucose load and then test 2 hours we consider that indian diet by indian diet i mean two chapatis one dal one sabji and a plate of rice thoda sa rice so normal indian diet that we take in lunch or in dinner that contains 75 grams of glucose so either you give 75 gram of glucose and test the glucose after 2 hours or you ask the person to take a full diet to take full diet normal diet and test the glucose after 2 hours after the first bite right so that is postprandial so what are the criteria so i am giving you revised criteria for diagnosis of diabetes as per american diabetes association ada 2007 criteria random if it is more than 200 mg per deciliter the diagnosis is 
the diagnosis is confirmed it is diabetes random mid 200 is the cutoff random blood glucose more than 200 mg per deciliter the person is diabetes right what about fasting fasting ke kya level hai fasting if it is less than 100 the person is normal if it is 100 to 125 the person is pre diabetic and if it is more than 126 it the person is diabetes 125 nahi 125 the value 125 included in pre diabetes and 126 onwards it is included in diabetes that is for fasting and if you talk about postprandial 2 hour after 75 mg of oral glucose load that is postprandial less than 140 is normal 140 to 199 is pre diabetes and more than 200 is diabetes let me summarize the three criteria are summarized in front of you okay this is what is happening i don't know why my pen is not working okay so these are the three criteria in front of you let me show you what about fasting what about postprandial and what about random you tell me all three you tell me for random we have only 200 less than 200 more than 200 less than 200 is normal more than 200 is diabetes there is no pre diabetes in random in random in fasting less than 100 is normal 100 to 125 is pre diabetes more than 126 is diabetes more than 126 is diabetes you can see in 2 hour less than 140 is normal 140 to 199 is pre diabetes more than 200 is diabetes all the values are milligram per deciliter have you got it have you got it so in blood sample of a person you are suspecting diabetes check for three glucose level first take the blood sample fasting then take the blood level blood blood sample after postprandial two hours after 75 gram of glucose load or after a diet and the third sample take random anytime take in your opd random now test for blood glucose level in all of them there can be three possibilities there can be three there can be two possibilities what are the possibilities if fasting is less than 100 fasting is 100 to 125 fasting is more than 126 right postprandial is less than 140 140 to 199 more than 200 Res random less than 200 more than 200 what are the answers of each of them what are the answers in each of them can anyone tell me what are the answers yes you tell me so the answer here in fasting is less than 100 it is normal if postprandial is less than 140 it is normal if random is less than 200 it is normal so, if you have no fit, the person is normal, not diabetic. Right? Have you got it? If fasting is between 100 to 125, the person is pre diabetic. It is impaired glucose level, it is pre diabetic. You should keep uh, the person on monitoring. Right? If it is 140 to 199, post prandial, again, it is pre diabetic. It is pre diabetic. And what is the diagnosis of diabetic? Diabetic ka kya hai criteria? If the fasting is more than 126, the person is diabetes mellitus. And if post prandial is more than 200, and random is also more than 200. So you can see normal pre-diabetic diabetic. I cannot simplify more than this. So that is fasting. Fasting ke three criteria are in front of you. Just a second. The fasting ke three criteria are in front of you. The pre-diabetic ke two criteria and diabetic ke order. All the tests should be repeated on a separate day. If, if on two days you are getting the same result, uh, you should get it. What is this uh, oral glucose test? Okay, uh, you got it. Now, what about gestational diabetes mellitus? Gestational diabetes mellitus ke liye GTT. Oral, okay, glucose tolerance test. Okay, no, it is not gestational. I'm sorry. I'm telling you now this postprandial wala, the postprandial after giving 75 gram of glucose, take a glass of water, mix 75 gram of glucose in it. Ask the person to drink the glucose, and then two hours after that, take the blood sample level. That is, that is 75, 75 gram glucose dissolved in 300 ml of water, and take the person, ask the person to drink it. Then after two hours, take the blood sample and urine sample. So this is your glucose tolerance test. Have you got it? Have you got it? That is the interpretation. So I'm done with urine test. I'm done with blood test. So thank you very much. I have done the diagnosis of the diabetes also. So I have taken the diabetes in an integrated manner. Only treatment portion is remaining now. That is pharmacology, oral hypoglycemic agents and insulin. So in the next lecture, the last lecture of the series, I'm going to take the treatment of the diabetes. Thank you very much for being with me. I really enjoyed teaching you. Hopefully same from your side also. Next class will be tomorrow in which don't miss it. I will teach you the entire treatment of diabetes mellitus. I will teach you all types of insulin, artificial insulin available in the market, the various insulins, their uh, mechanism, their 
uh, pros cons complications everything right advantages there are various methods everything all about insulin after that i will teach you the oral hypoglycemic agents the drugs which are available for diabetes their mechanism of action and adverse effects right don't forget to give your feedback in the comment box if you like the lecture don't forget to click on the like button please it is very important for me and please give your feedback whatever is your feedback please write in the comment box uh, drop a comment if you are watching it live or recorded please drop a comment right now in an academy we regular conduct test the free test so this is the announcement of the test which are occurring in march the free calendar this is a calendar for the test on an academy we have two types of subscription the paid subscription the plus and the iconic in plus you will get access to live and recorded lectures of an academy only in iconic along with an academy we will provide you prep letter also so if you are thinking of taking a paid subscription i advise you to take the iconic because the price difference between the two is very less and here you are getting an additional advantage of prep letter also so uh yeah these are the uh you know uh, on an academy uh if you install the app from the uh, an academy learners app from the play store uh there is special class feature available on the app special classes are the free classes which we are taking on an academy like youtube it is free but it is not on youtube it is on the app so for attending the free special classes you have to install the an academy learners app from the youtube and the free class which we take on app special class uh that is much better from the class on the youtube because of the following features right for attending the free class you can use my code that is sachdev10 right once you take the subscription whether plus or iconic you will be eligible for all these batches we have separate batches for neat pg 2022 fmg inict we have various batches with us right so you can participate in all the batches you can enroll for the batches any batch for free if you take any subscription these are the various plans in the plus these are the various plans in the iconic you can see the various plans in the plus as well as in iconic the minimum plan is 3 month maximum is 4 year minimum is 6 month and 4 year longer the plan cheaper it is so i advise you if you are a first prof second prof pre final year student go with a longer plan it you can take 2 year 3 year 4 year but if you are an intern or you want to give a try first try 3 month try 3 month or 6 month trial first if you like it you can always extend it so the best part here the exciting news is here if you select any plan before payment please apply my code my code is sachdev10 s a c h d e v s a c h d e v sachdev10 is the code if you apply before any payment you will get straight forward 10% discount have you got it so the code is sachdev10 s a c h d e v sachdev10 is the code you can apply the code anytime and there are two advantages all the students who want to watch only free classes not the not do not want to take the paid subscription plus or iconic they can unlock any free class using this code of any educator and the one who want to take the paid subscription the plus or iconic they will get discount if they use this code before payment so thank you very much don't forget the code thank you very much for being with me and stay connected for the next lecture bye bye study hard i am ending this lecture